Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be changing our oil on our 2009 GMC Sierra. It has a 5.3 V8 engine in it and uh, it takes a 5W30 oil and uh, I'm using Mobile One and a Napa filter and I'll show you guys that. First thing you're going to do is warm up your engine. I've had this running for a few minutes. It gets the oil nice and warm and it flows out easier. Um, I usually don't drive it. You could drive it but uh, if it gets too hot, you might burn yourself under there, so be careful. But um, getting it nice and warm so it flows out. And we'll crawl under there and crack the, uh, the oil pan bolt loose and drain all the oil out. So pop the hood. All right, we've got the engine running now still. On this engine, there's typically a cover on the top. I took mine off. Um, but on the left-hand side here is your oil fill. It's a 5W30. And your oil dipstick is the yellow dipstick right there. So let's um, get an oil pan and we'll crawl underneath and drain the oil out. Okay, here's a few things you're going to need for your oil change. You're going to need an oil catch pan, an oil filter wrench or strap wrench. Uh, 15 millimeter socket. Uh, I like to have a light and then for the oil and filter I'm using the Napa 7060 and the uh, Mobile One 5 weight 30 oil. Now I do have another um, container of this because I think it takes uh, a little bit more than uh, 5 quarts but um, I will confirm that once we put it in and uh, I like to have a creeper too to crawl under there. Now you're filter and drain are located on the back of the engine about halfway you can see right there is your engine oil drain plug it's on the um, left hand side of the block if you're looking um, straight on the vehicle and the oil filter is on the opposing side of that now I like to park my vehicle on a slight angle this way so that it drains, but uh, if you park your vehicle level, it should drain just fine. Um, so not, nothing to be too concerned about with that. While you're under here, it's also good to take a good look at everything and make sure um, everything else is looking good. And you don't have any major leaks or any other problems. So let's, uh, let's crawl under there, crack that drain bolt loose, and uh, pull off the oil filter as well. I like to unthread the oil pan bolt by hand so I can catch it so it doesn't go into the uh, big oil can, oil catch pan. Just unthread it. It should be able to be unthreaded by hand. If not, someone may have cross threaded it in the past. Which is um, a separate issue. So while that's drain, we'll let it uh, let it drain, and then up here, that white filter. That's our uh, that's our oil filter. Can I also change that? Now there is a, uh, I believe a rubber o-ring right there. We'll look at it in a second when it's done draining. Um, I typically don't change those, but you probably should. So don't take my word of advice there. If uh, if you go to buy your oil and they recommend um, buying one of those, uh, you definitely should do it. And um, with this oil, the Mobile One, I like to change the oil every. Uh, five to six thousand miles um, it says you can go eight to ten I believe but I like to uh, change it a little bit earlier than that 
Okay, so now this is where you get your strap wrench. Now this particular filter does have a nut on the bottom and we might have to use that. Um, but not all of them have that nut on the bottom there. Okay, so if you do have this type of filter, one inch fits it. If you don't have one inch sockets, you can use one of these, the skinny metal ones. I'm going to try a one inch on it. Ideally, these are loose enough, you can get them by hand, but uh, sometimes they're not. Looks like we had a K and N on there before. Bring your oil pan up to catch that, let it drain. While that oil is draining, I like to take my filter, and because it's a vertical filter, meaning it's um, you don't flip it upside down like some vehicles. I like to fill it up with oil and then we're also going to lube the o-ring on top what that does is allows when you tighten it allows a good seal because uh, it's wet and lubricated and you don't have to do this I recommend it though because when you start your engine after an oil change um, it does take a split second for the oil pump to pump the oil up. And here we're going to lube the o-ring here, just like that. With new oil, always use new oil for this. Um, and what filling up the filter allows is for oil to instantly be there when the, when the engine kicks over and the pump requires it. Another little trick to use is while your oil is draining, you can pop your oil filter, see that's sealed with an o-ring or, or pull your dipstick like that and what that allows is for air to escape and it'll let the oil flow out even easier again you don't have to do that just a trick I like to use okay so we've let that drain for a few minutes I'm gonna grab my new oil filter push this out of the way it on I'm gonna get it as tight as I can by hand here and then just snug it I like to wipe the oil off okay so now this one doesn't have the uh, thing on it Use one of these. You don't want to go crazy tight with this, or you'll be fighting getting it off like I just did with the other old filter. But you want it to be snug. right about there okay now we're going to take our rag and I like to wipe all the oil that dripped down off so that once we're running you can crawl under here real quick and just check it for leaks make sure you did everything properly looks like we're on there pretty good now some people like to write the date on the oil filter I'd like to do that on my machinery what I do is um Put a piece of tape on the dash with the uh, with the mileage that the oil was changed, so you can keep track. Okay, so we're still dripping a little bit on the uh, on the engine oil. I'm going to give it maybe another 30 seconds, and then uh, we'll put the plug in. It doesn't need to be uh, completely drained, but some people like to sit and wait. Now, if I see here, there is an oil o-ring on the filter. 
I should probably replace that on the next oil change. Should have done that now, but I don't have one, so we're just going to roll with it. It's looking pretty good. Again, you could let this drip for a little bit more if you wanted to. Um, I'm okay with where it's at. For reference, if you go to a quick oil change, they're not waiting for, uh, for that thing to stop dripping. I'm not saying that's good or bad, I'm just saying they're not going to wait for that thing to stop dripping. And, and some of those places actually suck out the oil. Um, they don't even pull off the drain, they'll suck it out from the top. Okay, so a 15 millimeter socket. Again, we don't want to kill this, just snug. there and I'm going to take my rag again wipe off all around here so that when we're running I can get under here and do a quick visual make sure we're not leaking okay now we're going to uh, clean up under here and fill up from the top and another thing you can do is if you're starting with a clean oil um, catch bin which I tried to clean mine you can uh, get your fingers in here and kind of look through the oil a little bit to try to see if you have any what you're looking for is like a white metal substance which is Babbitt it's actually your bearing wear and this oil smells burnt um, definitely need a change I've been doing a lot of hauling uh, but in general, I don't see any chunks. Now, when I drain this out, um, I'll really be able to get a good look at it. You can see a little bit there. But uh, you can also send this out for oil analysis if you want. Um, and they'll look through and, and do a chemical analysis on the particles that could be in here. Uh, and it'll show your engine wear and stuff like that. They do that typically on big rigs and diesels because they get like a million miles on them. It's not really necessary on these, these smaller engines. Okay, so now we're going to fill this up. Pull your oil fill cap off. And I like to use a funnel. Again, we're using 5 weight 30. And we're going to start by putting in about 4 quarts. And then we'll check it. And I'll let you know how much it takes. Now again, we put uh, a little bit in the oil filter, so um, it does have uh, some oil in there already. And use a nice clean rag, or these towels are nice, these shop towels. I have a broken oil dipstick tube on this, so it's a little bit of a pain if you find that your, uh, your dipstick's not going in, it might be cracked. I don't know if that's a common problem on these engines or not. still low uh, we're one bubble up so let's give it the rest of this it might it might take a little more than I thought and you don't want to overfill this I'm gonna leave a little bit there let's see, let's see where we're sitting okay we are four bubbles up give it the rest of this crawl back under and just do a quick check make sure you did everything right your oil filter's tight your uh, oil pan bolt is tight nothing's leaking before you start it okay that's been draining for a little bit so let's check it one more time now this might not come across on the camera but those little holes um, hold the oil so that it doesn't just have to stick to metal and uh, that's how you can see your fill so we are right at the top and that is with five quarts so I have a feeling it might take a hair more. What I like to do, now that I know it's full, let it run for a few minutes and then we'll check it again. Clean this all up and start it up. Now we're gonna start it up. Watch your oil pressure gauge, take a second. Should go up to, you know, around 40 or 50. Uh, that one second where I took to build oil pressure is why I filled the oil filter up. So that it, uh, you know, there's residual oil in all the bearings, but um, you want to give it the best chance it has to get oil up there. So 
I'm gonna let that run for a minute and then we'll check the oil. No leaks. Let that run for a few minutes. Pull the dipstick back out. Wipe it off. I like to wipe it off first. Put it back in. Okay, so it, it's actually a little low. Again, I don't know if you can see that it's down to about two, maybe three bubbles. So I am going to put a little more in. I always try to keep an extra quart on hand. Again, we don't want to overfill it, but um, once the engine turns on, it sucks some oil. Yeah, we're three bubbles. So it'll probably take another half quart. So I guess technically it's five and a half quarts, unless I screwed something up. I never go by what the book says. I mean, to get a ballpark, it's good. I go by what the dipstick says. Because to me, that's a true reading. Again, don't overfill it. Right, half quart there. Just a hair more. We're down, we're at four bubbles. So I guess to be safe, you should buy six quarts. Don't put all six quarts in, but uh, have it on hand. All right, I was showing you guys the wrong side of this. Now there we go, we're right at the top. Maybe just a slightly high. I think that's okay. Don't don't stress it out. If you're if you're way up over the numbers, you got too much oil in there and that's that's not great. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And uh, we're gonna drive this thing now. So this truck has 192 100. So we're gonna write that down on our tape. We'll see how long this blue tape lasts up here. There's, I actually haven't used blue tape before, so don't uh, take my word that it's going to stay up there. If you're really worried about it, just take a picture on your phone and you can scroll back and remember that it was your oil change. Alright, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope that was easy for you. It's it's an easy thing to do. You can do it in a half hour. Um, I take my waste oil in to Napa or other stores and they'll recycle it. Um, they like to put it in a, in a big oil thing and take it, take it there and they'll take it for free. Uh, again, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that was insightful for you. And you can do it yourself and change the oil yourself. It's not that hard. Um, this thing has 192,000 miles on it. Um, I actually have done some engine modifications. Uh, I didn't film them. This engine did have the <coughs> um, ticking issue on the, uh, the AFM, the Active Fuel Management, or DOD as it's called, Displacement on Demand. And what that does is, the, what that does is shut down four of the eight cylinders, and uh, basically one of the lifters got stuck. Um, I was able to free the lifter and I deleted the whole AFM system. There's a ton of good videos out there on how to do this and you can save uh, a good truck engine. Now I have put about 10,000 miles on this since I've owned it and uh, I am starting to get a tick again so those regular oil changes will really help prolong the life of the engine especially with quality oil. Um, so stay on top of your oil changes and uh, make sure you use them. Use good filters, Napa filters are great. Wix filters are great, they're the same thing. Um, and I like to again use Mobile One, um, but you can use whatever oil you want. Again, as long as they're regular oil changes, you'll prolong the life of this engine a lot, uh, especially with that DOD system. Um, if you have one of these trucks and you're in the low hundreds, I recommend maybe changing your oil every three to 5,000 miles, even if you use a synthetic oil, just to keep that um, system always lubricated and with the most high quality oil that has the most lubricity so that you don't have a stuck lifter. Um, again, regular oil changes on these five threes are critical. So thanks for watching guys. Please um, subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks.